1831 to 2004, this was just home to the families who lived and farmed here. But today, the Atkins Johnson Farm and Museum shares local history with visitors. Let's go inside to take a look at one of my favorite pieces in the collection. At first glance, this cabinet appears to be only a visually pleasing piece of furniture, but it is in fact a revolutionary example of 1920s technology and innovation. Created in 1924, this cabinet comes from a different age, a jazz age, when alcohol was illegal, society was changing, and music and entertainment, as we know it today, was just beginning to take shape. Created by Brunswick, it's both a radio and a record player. This well-designed piece of technology was engineered to reproduce sound, thus filling a family's living room with the music of a full orchestra band with just the turn of a handle and the drop of a needle. All the inner workings of the machine, such as the batteries for the radio, the horn for the sound, and the tension spring for the crank, are all carefully encased inside this phonograph cabinet. The Brunswick Company produced phonograph, which are record players, records, and radiolas, early battery-powered radios, in the early part of the 20th century. What makes this item unique for its time is that it combines radio technology and phonograph into one unit. The Brunswick Company motto, the sign of musical prestige, reinforced their commitment to quality music and technology in both the records they produced and the machines they made to help families have access to music in their homes. This particular item is a Brunswick Model AR813. In 1924, it would have sold for $190, which in today's value is the equivalent of almost $2,600 making this a luxury item and definitely a status symbol for those who could afford it. This radiola was purchased by Charles and Myrtle Garrison of Garnett, Kansas in 1924. Charles Garrison was born in Garnett, Kansas. He was a graduate of Kansas University and a local lawyer and real estate investor. His wife Myrtle was born Myrtle Dye of Fort Scott, Kansas. Myrtle was the only one of her sisters to receive a post-high school education. She was a mother and homemaker and was very active in the social life of Garnett. Later in her life, Myrtle would visit the garment district of Kansas City several times a year to buy fabric for dresses. Charles and Myrtle had one child, Charles Jr., who later moved to Chicago as an adult where he managed the downtown Macy's store in the 1940s through 50s. The Garrison family collected many records to play on their Brunswick radiola, most range in date from 1924 to 1950. We can assume the family enjoyed the piece and used it often based on the 73 records they owned. The Brunswick radiola was sold to family members Leo and Lila Wainstock in an estate sale in the late 1960s to early 1970s. The piece was then passed down to their daughter, Tony Malams, who made the generous donation to the museum. An interesting fact about this piece is that several of the parts inside the cabinet are patented. In fact, this cabinet has over 18 patents registered to it, including its exterior design. On October 13, 1924, Martin Nystrom of Chicago filed a request for a seven-year term patent for a, quote, new and original and ornamental design for cabinets for sound reproducing machines." Unquote. His application includes a design illustration which perfectly matches the cabinet now owned by the Atkins Johnson Farm and Museum. Nystrom was granted the patent on January 19, 1926, by which time the Brunswick Radiola had already been on sale on the market for two years. 
In a 1925 magazine advertisement, the Brunswick Company claimed, quote, Mechanically, it is so far past the experimental stage that one may acquire it with positive assurance of lasting satisfaction through the years to come. Of course, Brunswick could never have imagined that 95 years later, their product would be on display at the Atkins Johnson Farm and Museum and inspire curiosity among visitors. After all those years, there's a new kind of joy in hearing the first moments of sound as the record spins. despite years of being stored. The cabinet has special spaces to keep all the records as well as drawers for all of the equipment used such as spare needles. Sheet music and programs would go in here and then down in the bottom cabinet is a place to store the original manual. The original owner's manual provides a wealth of information. It includes instructions on how to play the radio, how to clean the machine and play records. It even includes an original inspection sheet. As we spend more time with our families at home, music has a way of bringing us all together and helping us relax. Although there are several ways to listen to music at home, most all of them are streaming and none of them are quite as large as this cabinet here. However, it's thanks to technology like this that we're able to enjoy the music we do today.